Hey everyone, welcome back to Deterministic. I'm Brandon Conkle, and this channel is where I explore ways to embrace more determinism in our programming, making our daily lives less chaotic and our production deploys more predictable. Typically on this channel, I host a regular show called the Rust Review that takes recent articles from the Rust community, breaks down and summarizes what they're about. Uh, I talk about what I learned from each article, what I like about them, and general, generally just highlight the great work that people in the Rust community are doing, sharing knowledge and sharing what they're working on. Unfortunately, my son is experiencing more health issues this year and uh, he's back in the hospital. It looks like he will be discharged before the holidays, thankfully. We're definitely grateful about that, but I'm taking some time off of the rest review uh, so that I can make sure that I'm available and have the uh, capacity to support my family and support my th son through his recovery. But uh, during this time, I still want to highlight big articles that I think have made a, uh, a splash in the rest community, articles that have made a big impact, uh, changing people's minds or pointing out things that are novel and new and interesting. So I think the Google security blog uh, last week posted just such an article that I wanted to highlight here. The article was posted by Jeffrey Vanderstope. He is a software engineer on the Android security team. And he posted this article last week called Memory Safe Languages in Android 13 uh, that's really, I think, going a long way to confirm the promises that Rust makes, the positive impact that Rust and, and other memory safe languages are having on security vulnerabilities specifically. The most critical categories of exploits are dropping rapidly. Um, researchers and hackers clearly are being forced to focus on lower severity vulnerabilities because you can see the, to the overall number of vulnerabilities isn't necessarily going down that much, but the severity of them really are. And the Google blog does a great job of uh, illustrating that in the uh, the visuals that it posts and the, the articles that it links to out from its post here. Definitely check the post out and, and read the whole thing if you've got the time, but I'll summarize it here. Essentially, it starts off by jumping into a post from Alex Gaynor from a few years ago where he talked about how large projects full of memory unsafe code consistently have security vulnerabilities that are caused at least 65% of the time by memory safety issues and often more. So in Android though, this trend is reversing. It's not 65% anymore. Um, you can see the first graph that they show um, correlates years and Android releases to the number of uh, memory safety vulnerabilities uh, and you can see they're clearly going down rapidly uh, and then they highlight the new code by language in Android 13 that uh, is being introduced and it is now majority memory safe. The uh, code that's in C and C++ here uh, is a smaller chunk than the rest of the code. And you can see Rust is growing to a pretty large chunk itself. Vanderstope says that it is down from 75 or I'm sorry, 76% down to 35% of Android's total vulnerabilities. So this means that memory safety issues are no longer the majority, they're no longer three fourths of the vulnerabilities like they were before. Uh, they're actually getting close to just being a quarter of the vulnerabilities, which is a huge shift. That takes Android from a place where it was about average across the in industry uh, to now a place where it significantly beats that average. So how was this outstanding achievement accomplished? Was it by rewriting in Rust? <laughs> no, actually. In a Google post from nearly two years ago, Vanderstope talks about the team's position on focusing on the safety of new code rather than rewriting existing code. So it's, it's really surprising that they were able to achieve such notable gains just by writing new code in Rust and leaving the existing code as it is. I think the results really speak for themselves as to the success of that, that approach, which I'm sure a lot of people were skeptical of. <laughs> so 
Uh, one interesting thing to point out, um, Rust is only a small chunk of that. Uh, I would say we have high-level language use and low-level language use uh, represented in this pie here. And so uh, we've got Java and Kotlin representing the high-level memory use. So these are high-level languages. Java is uh, somewhere in between an interpreted language or a compiled language. It's like a transpiled language with a virtual machine that it runs anyway. Um, the low level language is typically for uh, things that don't perform well in high level languages because high level languages especially uh, use a lot more memory. So uh, Rust fits into that low level niche where C and C++ currently resides, um, where it can achieve great results with very low memory usage. And I think the unique thing about it is that it, it makes the developer experience feel more like those high level languages, more like Java or something like that than it does uh, C or C++. One thing that might surprise people is that um, despite uh, having a reputation for being easy to run into null pointer exceptions and, and generally being an unsound type system, uh, Java is memory safe. And this is where I think a lot of people uh, misunderstand what memory safety means. I think the Reddit user, uh, you entered. <laughs> described it well in a thread uh, discussing this article um, when he talked about the distinction between um, something like a null pointer exception and memory safety. Uh, and he talks about how memory safety is a specific technical term and it's all about memory initialization and, and usage of memory within bounds. So um, it, he talks about how uh, programming languages designate parts of memory to be either uninitialized or initialized with the live object of a particular type. And so memory safety itself means never reading uninitialized memory, including memory that previously contained an object or is no longer considered live, and never operating on initialized memory through a pointer or a reference to an incompatible object type. Basically, uh, what he's saying is that Java's uh, null pointer exceptions and things like that, they don't lead to exploitable issues like memory buffer overreads or use after freeze or invalid page faults or wild pointers. So Java may be unsound in that you can get it into situations that the compiler doesn't catch where um, operations that you would reasonably expect to complete could instead uh, run into an unexpected null pointer exception or something like that. Um, it can it can hit undefined behavior essentially, but it doesn't lead to exploitable situations in the crash. So though Java may be unsound, it's still memory safe. So for people like me who've used memory safe languages their entire career, the concept that a crash could lead to things like secret information leaking or arbitrary code execution can be really astonishing. It's not something that you would expect if you haven't had to worry about that your entire career. But that doesn't mean that memory safe languages like Java or, and Rust are free of security vulnerabilities entirely. It just means that those vulnerabilities are overwhelmingly related to logic issues rather than memory issues. And what they found is that the severity of logic related security issues is dramatically lower because they don't allow for things like accessing memory that's out of bounds or arbitrary code execution. Google's results confirm this expected drop in severity with the number of critical and remotely reachable vulnerabilities swiftly dropping, like they show in this uh, graph here. You can see that the critical severity issues or the and the remotely reachable vulnerabilities um, have been steadily dropping year over year as more memory safe code is introduced to the code base. So even though Java provides good memory safety, it doesn't easily provide the same level of performance with minimal resource usage that a native C or C++ or a Rust implementation can. Java execution can be quite fast, but it comes at the cost of that higher resources and memory usage. And like many other languages, it can be easy to use Java in ways that lead to pretty poor f performance, putting too much pressure on things like the garbage collector or using inefficient data models. So 
Go is often seen as a solution to this, providing a much simpler and more constrained language that compiles to a low-level binary and doesn't require a virtual machine like Java does, but it has innovative approaches to garbage collection and concurrency and generally performs better than Java in a lot of different situations. It's easier to learn, though I think complexity is slowly increasing somewhat as things like type system, generics have been introduced to the language, and it's not without downsides. It's generally memory safe, but you can still trigger data races and out of bounds access scenarios, though they should always cause a crash. But whether it provides the same level of safety that something like Java does is somewhat deba debatable and the garbage collector can still cause problems at times. So Rust, I think, op occupies a rather unique position in that it sets aside some of the things that Java and Go and JavaScript and Python and many others rely on, like garbage collection, and replaces them with approaches that generally lead to much better performance and zero cost abstractions. And I think that's what makes it a more suitable replacement to something like C or C++. In situations where you need really lightweight resource usage, you need to squeeze extreme performance out of things, um, you need a language that that you have full control over things like memory management and not a garbage collector or uh, garbage collection that you can't tune, things like that. That's where Rust really fits in uh, and I think um, edges out Go when it comes to these low level of situations like the Android uh, stack itself. Google's post says that in Android 13, 21% of all new native code is in Rust now, and to date, there have been zero memory safety vulnerabilities discovered in Android's Rust code. <laughs> that is awesome. Rust is providing an exceptional level of memory safety. They, they warn that it's not always going to be this way. They expect there to be some memory safety vulnerabilities that are eventually discovered, but it hasn't happened yet. And the type system that Rust supports is vastly superior to something like Go, in my opinion. It is complex, but it enables the kind of high-level abstractions that something like Java or TypeScript or Python uh, can enable without the costs, without the downsides. It's really exceptional. The point is often made that you can write C or C++ code with the same level of memory safety as Rust, but I think that's often much more challenging. Um, we still see seasoned teams with a specific focus on memory safety fall short of that goal on a regular basis, like um, some of the things in OpenSSH. That's a project that has had a great deal of scrutiny on it uh, because of things like the Heartbleed vulnerability, and they still haven't been able to really um, substantially improve the memory safety. Yes, you can write C and C++ in a way that is memory safe, but it takes a lot more work, and there are trade-offs. So they talk about how they have to use additional measures like sandboxing, sanitizers, runtime mitigations, hardware protections, all of these things have a negative impact on the code size, memory usage, and performance of the code that's being written there. Uh, and that's something that Rust does not have. Rust does not share that same downside because the memory model allows it to free up memory immediately because it knows exactly who owns it and whether it's actively being borrowed and whether it's being mutated or is immutable. It has all the information it needs to avoid the garbage collector and do everything very efficiently and that's how it gets to the level where it is on par with C and C++ in many cases for performance. There's been a flurry of reaction to Vanderstoep's post on social media and in tech news. So uh, I've seen venues like ZDNet here pointing out that this is the first year that memory safety vulnerabilities are not the biggest category of security flaws and it comes just a year after Google made Rust the default for new code on the Android open source project. So that's something they don't mention in the original article. Um, Rust is now the default and it is paying off. The register points out that Google is not the only tech company to recognize these benefits. They're not the only ones to call out Rust as uh, a big deal here. So uh, they point out that Meta has voiced its appreciation of Rust. Um, Microsoft CEO Mark Racinovich, as I've mentioned in a previous Rust review, uh, mentioned that C or C++ should no longer be used. It should be deprecated <laughs> and, and so on. Uh, now, this article calls out uh, Bjorn 
Drewstrup. He is the creator of C++, and he challenged this deprecation guidance. He cautioned against becoming enamored with new and shiny things that promise to make our lives easier. He talks about um, how <laughs> it's far more exciting to write things like Rust than it is to write mature languages, but he likens supporters to enthusiasts who tend to be rather one-sided in their comments and really recommended a mature language like C or C++. <laughs> I've seen those same arguments used over the years to advocate against things like Python or JavaScript or machine learning or smartphones and tablets or even Linux and open source itself. Uh, but I like to keep an open mind, and I always acknowledge that I could be wrong, and I welcome well-considered opposing viewpoints. I want to embrace new strategies when new strategies can do things better than the old strategies. And I think Google's results with Android really show the strength of how they're approaching things. I think they really add some weight to the idea of leaving C and C++ behind for potentially greener pastures. So let me know what you think in the comments. Let me know if you see Rust really taking over from C or C++. Um, I personally uh, feel like there's a good chance that it could begin taking over a lot more than that. It could begin with this high level experience that it brings. Um, it could be changing the way that we approach gaming, the way that we approach uh, embedded platforms, the way that we approach web servers. Uh, there are people even working on using it for front-end rendering and things like that. And so it's really going to be interesting to see how Rust grows. And I think uh, posts like this from Google really help build confidence and uh, confirm for me that, that Rust is really the right place for me to be focusing my attention. And hopefully a lot of other people see the same thing and we can build a really robust community in Rust right now. I think one of the big things that we need is more maturity to our libraries. That's something that the C++ creator pointed out and um, other people have pointed out, especially uh, around web libraries and uh, the HTTP ecosystem. There's still a lot of growing to do and there are not a lot of good high quality battle tested frameworks yet. Uh, but I feel like that tide is turning. Things are change changing, especially with um, the advent of async and uh, hopefully we'll see it grow to encompass more and bring its memory safety and performance gains with it thank you very much for watching and i hope you have a great holiday season